Hello, Tungsten Miner here. As you can see, I have finished that bridge I was talking about in the last uh, video. And I figured I'd spend a little bit of time in this video talking about the bridge before I move on to something else. So to get started, obviously you can see this is a suspension bridge with uh, fairly realistic looking cables. The cables come from immersive engineering. So in addition to the uh, copper cables for moving power around and the HV cables and all the different ones, it gives you steel cables, which are no good for moving power. They don't move any power at all, but they are a really nice decorative element for exactly this sort of thing. The thing you need to do to use them is uh, first to make these structural cable connectors, uh, which is these guys here with this recipe. This is just plain old steel. Um, and then uh, steel fence, which is made out of steel rods. So lots of steel. <laughs> don't, uh, <laughs> don't spare the steel. And then some steel cable, which is uh, just uh, steel around any kind of stick. Although I've got some funny things in my mod pack. So that gives you the cable and that gives you the connector. So once you have your steel cable connectors, you just need to put them in uh, two different locations. And just like when you're connecting wires, you right click with the wire bundle, uh, wire bundle in hand. So right click on that and that'll say linking to whatever. Uh, and then you just click on the other one and that links the two of them together. The rest of the bridge then is uh, all micro blocks or at least mostly micro blocks. So starting at the ends here, I've got these uh, staircases, which are a combination of just red granite brick along with red granite pillars going up the sides. And the side, and that's really to give the impression of some kind of guardrail. It feels a little steep if you're just walking along the ends. And I made uh, birchwood planks to go all the way across the bridge as the bridge surface and maintained them as the top of the stairs. So since they're slabs, everywhere there's a slab, I have another red granite brick slab underneath. Or if this is on the bottom part of a one meter block, the bricks will be directly underneath and the slab just laid on top. Uh, I can see it's starting to get dark, so hang on just a moment. Okay, now, um, yeah, and then for the, uh, for the guardrail effect, I always wanted the post to wind up being one meter above the road surface. So here I have a pillar sticking straight into the ground and I put a notch on top of it so that it gets that extra half a meter of height. In this case though, since the stair step is half a meter taller, the pillar on top of another pillar was sufficient to get that one meter above. On the next one, the pillar is one half meter short, so I put a notch on to get it to the rest and then all the way up to the top. These are just slabs I laid you know, one after another. Uh, you can see it's just one slab thick all the way across. And then for stepping off here, uh, to get the supports that are held in place by the steel cables, it's just a plain red granite block here with a slab to match up with the slab on the top. This actually is a full granite block again, and this is a slab again with the matching red granite block on the other side. Because I wanted actually this to poke through the roadway surface and make it look more like this is fixed into the roadway in some way that you know person walking by could identify. It makes, um, it makes the illusion of this as a structural element feel a lot more tangible. Moving along, the pillars are made up of uh, kind of a succession of gradually narrowing um, you know, different cross sections. So on the bottom there, it's just three by three, all the way down into the mud at the bottom of the river here. Then I have a cross of uh, red granite with pillars filling in the corners between the bricks. So the cross shape is uh, here, let's do, yeah, so the, the base layer looks like that. The next layer up, the whole blocks look like this, and then I have pillars in the corners here. The next layer, if you will, is like this, 
with half slabs up against the side. So one, two, three, four half slabs. And that gives the final tier, uh, you know, that, that area right there, the appearance of being just slightly narrower. And then the last stage is actually just a single block, uh, four of them stacked on top of each other with a little bit of a cap on the top to give the towers some coherence and uh, to give the whole thing kind of a, a feeling of having a roof to it. So uh, I did the same thing of using a half slab underneath here uh, to give that impression of a support with a full granite block in the center to make it look like it's sort of you know, a key or locked into place there. And then uh, for the rest of the bridge, get that out of the way, I found where the center point is of the bridge, and then I found uh, that point over there. So how did I get all these measurements? Um, a couple of different ways. One is this tape measure. The first thing I did is I built the road out to within about two meters of running into the water on both sides, and then I started just building the bridge platform on top. So. Then I came along and you right click with this tape measure, uh, which is out of Bibliocraft. All right, I'm safe here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the recipe for this thing is some steel or some iron rather around a tape measure reel. The recipe for that is just string and some yellow dye. So very cheap, very easy to make. Uh, but once you've got your tape measure, you can just right click on any old block you want. And then as you go off to the other side here, you can then right click on whatever your target is and it will add a message on the screen telling you how far away whatever point you clicked on was. So now I know 69 meters. 69 meters, I decided I was going to have two uh, of these kind of sets of pillars in the center, which meant I have three sections. So there's this middle section between the pillars, and then there's you know the, the right-hand section off in that direction, or the southward section, and then the northward section on this side. And I wanted three sections of equal sizes, and uh, I just got lucky. <laughs> 69 is divisible by 3, that's 23 meters in each section. Great, fine, whatever. If I was a little bit off, I probably would have just tweaked the ends of it to get a nice even multiple of 3. Having done that, I knew this spot had to be 23 meters from that end of the bridge. And likewise, the other pillar had to be 23 meters from that end of the bridge, which ought to leave, if my math is right, 23 meters in the center. I also knew that I wanted that number, that division, to be an odd number, so that I could have a single block that makes up the center. I've got 11 meters from here to the pillar. I've got 11 meters from here to the pillar so that this section here, because you know it's 22 meters minus this middle bit, so each on either side is 11, and this middle bit then is the one extra that gets you up to 23. So I know this 12th meter is centered in between both bridges. So when I put my structural support in here, the cables are gonna look symmetric on both sides. And since these things are pretty visible from a long ways off, that actually makes a big difference in how this turns out looking. Then, knowing that I have that 12 meters out, I made that 12 meters out, and likewise on the other side, I made this other one 12 meters out. So that the cable, the fall of the cables looks symmetric on all sides. So if I head out here and turn back around, we can see a nice even symmetry to both the sections of the bridge yeah, and that's basically five sections if you count where the cables come in. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, actually six sections. Uh, three sections uh, counting the divisions between the pillars and the cables fall the same distance away on all sides. So that's the bridge. Uh, which means, of course, now I can ride my horse from one of my homes to my other. And uh, not that I tend to do that very much these days, uh, jetpacks being much more convenient. So I'm going to go off and pick a new project. Um, I haven't quite decided what that's going to be yet, but I figured I'd start this video by talking about the bridge since I left things off there on the last one.
Okay, so the second part of this video, I figured I'd talk about storage drawers. I've mentioned them in passing a couple of times, uh, and of course I've talked about my other crafting room, which uses them, and my kitchen, which uses them. I, I use them actually a fair bit, but I haven't ever gone into detail into how they work exactly. So let's go through the main pieces and then talk about how all of this fits together. Uh, so the basic thing is a storage drawer is a block which has multiple different inventories in it. So if I right click on this thing, I can see it's got four different compartments and some room for upgrades. And there's a couple of different types of upgrades. Mostly they have to do with increasing, uh, let's see here, upgrade, upgrade, these are the wrong ones. Here we go, storage drawers. So mostly these upgrades have to do with increasing the storage capability. Uh, two times for an iron upgrade, three times for gold, and so on and so on, all the way up to emerald, which is 13 times the base value, all of which can be configured in the config file settings. So the recipe for this guy is basically the same recipes for all of them. You put whatever material in the corners, then you've got sticks and an upgrade template. The upgrade template is just sticks around any storage drawer at all, doesn't matter what kind. The storage drawers themselves... Uh, whoops. Here we go. Uh, oh, drawers. Yeah, all right. There we go. Um, come in various different types of wood, uh, all the different vanilla Minecraft woods. So I've been using birch. Uh, and you can make them so that they're a full meter deep. You can make them so that they're a half a meter deep. You can make them so that they've got one compartment, two compartments, or four compartments. And then uh, the half meter deep only come in two and four compartments. You can't make them with just a single compartment. That's in all the different types of wood colors. And the recipes are pretty easy to follow. So they all have as many chests as you have compartments. And then just a little bit of extra wood for the full depth ones. And a little bit of extra um, half slabs for the half depth ones. In order to, and you can use these standing alone by themselves. They work just like chests apart from that. Um, well, kind of. Let's take an example. So if I take some dirt here and just spread it out, I can right click on any one of these compartments to put the dirt in there. And if I right click, uh, shift right click with an empty hand, it'll show me this interface and I can see, yep, there's the 10 that I put in there. If I right click again on the same compartment, it'll just add more. And if I click on right click on a different compartment, it adds it to that one. Now I can see there's 20 in each of those compartments. If I want to get one item out, I single click, and that's going to give me the one item. And if I shift, uh, shift left click, it's going to get me as many as are in there, or a full stack, whichever is uh, larger, or whichever is smaller. Uh, each drawer has a capacity depending upon how many compartments are in the meter there and how many uh, and whether it's full or half depth. This particular configuration, each compartment can store up to eight stacks of whatever it is. Uh, and that's actually kind of important because not everything comes in stacks of 64. Uh, so, for example, if you've got ender pearls, they're stacks of 16, or eggs are stacks of 16. So it'll still only store eight stacks rather than uh, however many that winds up being. Eight stacks, in this case, is 512. And uh, that only has to do with that compartment, right? So I can still stick some more in this other compartment. This has got one stack in it, this has got eight stacks in it, and they're completely separate from each other. Okay, so this is all cool, but... What if you have, like I have in this room, drawers upon drawers upon drawers upon drawers. Uh, it would be very, very tedious to walk up and down like a old time librarian, stuffing books on shelves and trying to find the right homes for all of them. Well, storage drawers has an answer for that too. Let me go downstairs and show you. What I have down there is a uh, storage controller. And that's an item that knows how to scan the entire set of drawers that are connected to its network and put things away in the right place. So this drawer controller is uh, made with this recipe. So stone, some uh, redstone com um, comparators, and a diamond and a storage drawer in the center. 
anything that enters this block and it acts like an inventory is going to get routed to the right locations or to the nearest empty location if there isn't a right location. Uh, these items are called trim. Uh, they have to meet at a birch. And trim are items that you make which are part of the storage drawers network, but which themselves don't have any storage. Uh, as you can see, instead of using chests in the corner, they use sticks in the corner and therefore are a lot cheaper to make. Um, you use them when, like here, you want to put some part of your storage drawer network at a distance from the rest of it. So in this case, I want the controller on the ground here where I can get to it with this pipe easily, but I want the storage drawers themselves to be in the room upstairs. So I've busted a little hole through the ceiling and put this block of trim where it's just going to be underneath that compacting drawer. And therefore now, one, two, three, four blocks away, my drawer controller can still reach it. It'll still look through the adjoining blocks and say, oh yeah, that's a storage drawers block, and that's a storage drawers block, and that's a storage drawers block, and so on and so on, and discover all of the different blocks all around it. This pipe is a uh, thermal dynamics item duct coming through the floor. Uh, these glass covers are thermal dynamics covers. They're not uh, either microblocks covers or buildcraft facades. They have their own uh, system for thermal dynamics that fits on their pipes. That leads to this pipe, which leads up to a chest uh, on the surface layer of the uh, floor up above. And coming out of these item ducts, I've got some servos. Now, I've talked about servos a bunch of times in the past, and those are all plain servos. These are resonant servos. And the big difference is that resonant servos, resonant servos, um, can pull a lot more items a lot more quickly. So the extraction rate is it's going to pull a new set of whatever it can pull every half a second instead of every three seconds with the regular servos. It can pull a stack size of 64 instead of a stack size of four. It can filter by all sorts of different things rather than by nothing at all, just whitelist and blacklist. And it um, moves the items three times faster and it can extract multiple stacks at the same time. So just like, oh my God, over the top, it can do all sorts of things way, way better. The reason I want that here is because this box is going to be my inventory dump box. Whenever I've come back from an adventure or whatever, and I want to dump out everything in my inventory to get sorted, I'm going to dump it in this chest. So I want things to come out of that chest like really super fast. And that way, uh, even if I've got like a backpack full of stuff and an inventory full of stuff and my hot bar full of stuff that I want to get rid of, it's going to be easy to dump, 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 dump and have enough room to keep going as I get more and more of the stuff out of my inventory. So coming back upstairs, we can now see the general arrangement here is uh, here's my dump chest. And as soon as I dump something out of this chest, it's gonna vanish because one of those servos has pulled it out, put it through the pipes, sent it along to the controller and the controller is going to send it back up here. And you notice, it appeared in this compacting drawer. Why in this one? Well, the storage controller is smart, but it's not that smart. If it gets an item pushed into it by a pipe that it doesn't have a location for, then it's just going to put it in the most convenient place, which is the nearest place. So if I drop that dirt block there and throw another one over here, we are still gonna see that the dirt comes around and winds up in an inventory sooner or later. And it found this inventory, right? Because that's where the dirt already is. The controller said, aha, I have a place for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in its proper place. If I were to throw in enough dirt blocks that that slot gets full, and you can see the whole stacks of them are disappearing at a time. Do, 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 do. it's going to wind up sticking it over there because that one's full. And now this one has got a full set of blocks in it. And it's finally pulled the rest of this out, which should be showing up momentarily over here, I imagine. 
nope, they've gotten all in here because I only had nine stacks. So this got filled up and then the storage where I said, okay, well, I don't have an open place to put that kind of block anymore, so I better toss that in there. Um, okay, so that's the controller, but the controller has a limited range. It can't teleport blocks all over the universe, and it can only teleport blocks um, or place blocks into storage drawers that are attached to the same contiguous set. So I've got these poles here, which would ordinarily break things up, but I've made a second row on the backs of each of my main rows here. So th both of these are composed entirely of storage drawers. I also have these controller slaves. The controller has a certain range, and it's only going to look so far away from itself before it gives up. Uh, and these guys extend their range by another, uh, I think, 12 meters in each direction. Not entirely sure I remember correctly. Um, but you want your controller to be more or less in the middle and then spreading things out and using the storage drawer slaves to move things around further. The last little piece to talk about are these compacting drawers. These things are really super handy for metals that can come in a variety of different states. So for example, if I toss these gold blocks into this compacting drawer, you can see I put in 16 blocks but I can get out again ingots or nuggets, whichever way. And when I toss them back in, they all go back in. And whichever way I pull them out again, they're gonna come back to me. And whichever way I toss them into my inventory system, they're gonna wind up going back in exactly as they were. So by the time all of those things have gotten through the system and sorted again, this will be back up to 16 blocks completely. So that's the way compacting drawers work. And they work with anything that has multiple forms, where there's a recipe to go from a, a block form to an ingot form to a nugget form, or even kind of pieces in between, right? So if I take a diamond and throw it in here, I've got diamond blocks to just diamonds. There's no nugget form of diamond, but that's okay. It doesn't mind. Uh, if I do the same thing for emerald, same deal. Right, so anything that goes from a block form to even an item form will work just fine. And that's it, that's storage drawers. Uh, oh, except, uh, don't wanna forget, these keys. So what if I didn't want that drawer to get used for just random stuff, right? For something that didn't have a slot already. I can take this drawer key and right click whatever drawers I want to keep whatever contents they have. And no matter what I do, the system is not gonna override my current selection, even if that selection is empty. So if I toss my dirt block in here now, it's gonna go through the system and it will eventually show up somewhere. It might be on the back side, so I might have to walk around and find it if uh, I don't see it show up soon enough. Now let's take a little walk over here. Is it? Yep, there it is. So what it did is it said, okay, let me find the nearest inventory to the controller. And it did, and it found this one. It said, oh, well, that one's locked. That one doesn't count. And that one's locked, and that one's locked, and that one's locked, and that one's locked, and that one's locked. So it actually had to find the nearest one, which is behind this drawer on the back side of this row. That wound up being the nearest one. So if you don't want a particular drawer's contents to change, then you can lock it. Now, if I lock this thing and put some contents in there, now I've put in one of my stacks of dirt, I can see 64. If I pull the entire stack out, that's 64 again, right? This should be empty, and indeed it is, zero items. This is remembering a placeholder. That's where dirt goes. So if I were to come along and just toss dirt in here again, eventually we'd see the dirt wind up in this drawer, even though the drawer is currently empty and has nothing in it it's marked as being the place for dirt to go. And so here it comes and shows up in this drawer again. It's very, very handy to get things back where they are, even when you wind up running out of a particular thing. So, uh, you know, if I've got a bunch of crafting materials that I don't always have, but maybe um, I've got gears, like wooden gears and stone gears and iron gears and golden gears and diamond gears, maybe I don't have all those kinds of gears all the time, but I want a place for them to be stored if I happen to have them. Um, the next thing to talk about, 
uh, is this concealing key. So if I don't want people to know where I've got my gold stashed, I can right click it with this concealing key and it's gonna put these little dots to say, I'm not showing you what's in there. And then you can click it with your key to get it back again. Personally, I just find that more troublesome than it's worth. Um, there are a number of upgrades uh, apart from the ones that I've shown so far and a couple of them are good, worth knowing. Uh, this is the base template. Uh, actually, I think I talked about that before. Here are all the different ones for different sizes. Uh, you can have a status upgrade. This shows you when the storage drawer is full. This one shows you how close to being full a drawer is. And this void upgrade I've talked about in the past will destroy excess items. So for example, if I've got that drawer full all the way, eight stacks worth, and I have more dirt that I toss into my chest over here, without a void upgrade, this is just going to suck it through the pipes, gonna push it into the system, and it's gonna find the nearest drawer that I can find, which is actually probably gonna be the one on the other side there. Oh, yeah, it's quick enough to uh, unlock the drawer in time. Um, yeah, and so it's gonna just stick it in the nearest drawer. Well, what if I've got as much dirt as I want to be keeping around, right? I've upgraded this size capacity of this thing to as big as I want, and I don't want any more dirt. Well, then I can hit it with that key. Uh, sorry, I can add that upgrade to it, and that's going to prevent any further dirt from going anywhere in the system because the controller is going to say, oh, I see where that dirt goes, great, and put it into this drawer. Whoops, except that drawer is full. That's fine, it'll still accept it, it'll just destroy the excess so that uh, you wind up throwing away the extra dirt. So it's a very convenient way, actually, of saying this is as much of whatever kind of item I want. You make your base drawer the size you want for the base amount, stick on a void upgrade to anything where you're content with that drawer having as much of that material, and for anything you want to have more than that, you put on the appropriate multiplier. So if I wanted to have, say, twice as much dirt and things in this drawer as in all the other ones, I can put on an iron upgrade and that will double the capacity. If I want to store a whole lot more, I can put on even up to an emerald upgrade and store 13 times the normal amount, whatever you happen to want it to be. So that's how storage drawers work and that's how this whole system works. I've got this bit of trim to connect the two controller slaves on either side and this gives me a whole lot of storage capacity. So slowly, bits and pieces, I will probably start moving my main bulk of storage from the old house to this house and use this fancy new sorting system to keep track of everything. All right, so that's it for storage drawers, and I think I will stop this video here. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you want to know when the next one comes out, go ahead and hit subscribe, and I will talk to you later.